In this section, a closer look at return types, you will learn the different ways of returning values, the differences between them, and finally applying them to the actions. When it comes to returning responses from an action method, there are three approaches you can choose from. First, you will be presented with approach 1 that uses the type directly. Second, we move to approach 2 where we will be using I action result for all the return types. In the last approach, you will be introduced to using action result type to encapsulate all other types. We then cover the differences between the usage of I action result and action result. Then we move on to understanding how to return the results asynchronously using the async await mechanism. Finally, as a next step in building the web API, you will update the existing get operation to use action result. By the end of this section, you will be familiar with the return types of actions in a web API class. Let's get started with the first approach, namely using the type directly. Let us look at the first approach of returning a value from an operation. This involves returning the primitive type or complex type directly from the method. For example, int, string, bool are some examples of primitive types. In a similar sense, course, list of course and so on are some of the examples for complex types. These complex types are referring to the custom classes that you define in your project. You can then use them as return types for actions as public int get course count, public list of course get courses, and so on. This approach is the simplest form of the return type among all the three different approaches. Note that the return type can be a collection as well. Hence, you are free to use list or i enumerable types as well as in this approach. In the courses controller class, you had returned i enumerable of course DTO for the get courses method. In this case, course DTO is a complex type that was defined to denote the DTO for the course type. You do not need to do any further changes to return those types from the server to the client. However, what can you do when you want to return a different type depending upon success or error conditions? Or how do you convey the HTTP status code in such a case? You will learn that in the second approach. Let us look at that next. The second approach involves the usage of I action result that allows an action to return more than one type of action result. An instance of action result is used to represent the result of an action, be it a successful HTTP result such as 200 status code series or failure HTTP results such as 400 status code series. In this approach, you return an instance of action result or a type that is derived from it. For example, bad request result is a derived type from action result that represents HTTP 400 status code. Similarly, the OK object result represents HTTP 200 status code. You can then directly return them as return new bad request result from your action method. You might be wondering how you can return a response in such a case. When your action involves returning a response data to the client, you just pass it to these action result types. For instance, return new OK object result of object returns the object obj and denotes a successful 200 status code execution. Meanwhile, ASP.NET Core makes your life easier even in this case. The controller base class allows you to use short forms. For example, bad request, not found, OK, and so on. In these cases, you can then directly use return bad request return OK of object and so on. Coming back to the courses controller class, let us tag the current get courses method as approach 1 that uses primitive or complex type. Let's tag the commented code that had used i enumerable as approach 1 as well. Next, to illustrate the usage of approach 2, copy the get courses method and duplicate the same. Let's tag it with approach 2 i action result. 
For this method, change the return type from i enumerable to i action result. This shows that the get courses method can return any type that is derived from the action result type. For example, in the case of successful execution, you want to return HTTP 200. Hence, return it as OK followed by the response that you want to return to the client. In this case, it is the results variable's value. The final statement then becomes return OK of result. Next, let's handle a failure use case. Currently, you have the catch block that is blank. Add a parameter x for the system.exception type. In the case of an exception, you want to return an error status code along with a description of that error. For that, you can return the status code status codes dot status 500 internal server error followed by a message. The status code type accepts two parameters. The first one being the status code followed by the object value that you want to return to the client. If you build the project, it should build without any errors. Run the program, go to the postman and execute the get method. It will return the same set of course values that you had defined before. Note that during this time, the action is returning using I action result for the get courses method. Next, the third and the final approach involves using action result of t. This allows you to return any class derived from action result or any specific type. You might have guessed by now that it is the combined form of approach 1 and approach 2. You can return any type as in approach 1 as well as type that are derived from action result. ASP.NET handles the implicit cast conversion of the primitive or complex type t to action result of t. Hence, you need not do anything in this case. For example, public action result of course, get course of int course id. Here, you return action result with course value. Note that you could have just returned only the course type alone if you prefer it that way. The difference between returning just the type compared to action result is that you cannot return the HTTP status code in the former case. Also, you do not need to mention the type in the producer's response type attribute for that action. Secondly, since C -sharp does not support implicit cast for interfaces, for actions returning i enumerable, you should return its corresponding type. For example, if your action is going to return i enumerable of t, in that case, you need to return its corresponding type using list of t. This can be easily achieved by using to list method of that i enumerable type. For the action returning i enumerable of course, you need to return list of courses dot to list. Coming back to the courses controller class, to illustrate the usage of approach 3, copy the get courses method of approach 2 and duplicate the same. Let's tag it with approach 3, action result of t. For this method, change the return type from i action result to action result. This shows that the get courses method can return a primitive or a complex type as well as any type that is derived from the action result type. For example, in the case of a successful execution, you want to return i enumerable of course DTO that denotes a collection of course DTO types. Hence, return it as result since the map course to course DTO returns a collection of course DTO type. Moreover, as mentioned before, to return types of i enumerable type, you need to use the corresponding to list method. This is done to support the action result of t return type for that action method. Next, let's check out what happens in the case of failure use cases. Currently, you are returning the status code for the exception as status codes dot status 500 internal server error followed by a message. You do not need to do anything further beyond this. If you build the project, it should build without any errors. Run the program, go to the postman and execute the get method. 
it will return the same set of course values that you had defined before. However, in this time, the action is returning using action result for the get courses method. Once you have learned the three different approaches of returning type from an action method, you might be wondering which approach to use in your case. Especially, you might be wondering what is the difference between I action result and action result of T. First, in the case of I action result, you do not need to mention any return type. However, when you are using action result of T, you need to mention the exact type that you are going to return from that action. This brings us to the second difference. In the case of I action result, when you are returning a value, you need to wrap it around one of the action results methods such as OK, bad request and so on. But when you are using the action result of T, you can directly return that type. ASP.NET will wrap that using the action result type before it is sent to the clients. Usage of I action result or action result depends upon your personal preference. Many of the tools that convert APIs to corresponding source code typically return action result of T. This also will make a huge difference when you are working with asynchronous programming. You will be learning about in a forthcoming lesson. Based on all the above factors, I recommend using action result of T approach for returning values from the action methods implemented in a controller. In this lesson, you will learn how to use asynchronous programming in your web API project. Note that whether to use synchronous or asynchronous approaches for your action depends on your specific requirement. However, Typically, most of the APIs are implemented using an asynchronous model so that the clients do not need to wait for the processing to be completed at the server end. This is especially true in the case of GET operations. In ASP.NET Core Web API, you can convert the actions to support asynchronous processing using async and await keywords. As you can see, this is in line with the typical usage of these keywords to support asynchronous programming in any c -sharp project. When it comes to web API controllers, to support this, wrap the return type with async task keywords. This signals the ASP.NET that this action is going to return the result asynchronously. Hence, it is going to apply the relevant behavior for that particular action method. For example, the get courses method that you had added in the course controller can be converted to support asynchronous programming. By adding the keywords async, followed by task for the return type i enumerable of course. This shows that the get courses method is going to return a collection of courses in an asynchronous manner. The client then has to handle this accordingly. Moreover, when you are working with collections in web API projects, ASP.NET provides another good feature to make it easier to implement for collections. You can also wrap the return type with async I async enumerable instead of using the previous method. For example, for the same get courses method, when you are using this approach, it becomes public async I async enumerable of course get courses. The behavior of this is exactly the same as the previous method. This slide shows you the difference in the usage of these two approaches. As you can notice, the difference is very subtle. Among these two approaches, I generally prefer the first approach of using async and task keywords. Next, let's go back to the course controller. You will use the get courses method implemented in this controller and convert it into an asynchronous model. For this, copy the method that was implemented in approach 3. Paste it and then update the return type as async task of action result. Note that the method is going to return the same collection of course DTO models. To differentiate the method, suffix the name with the async keyword. Also bring in the appropriate namespace for the task type. Next, since you are using an async keyword, you need to await at some point within the function. In this case, it is the database layer. You use the CMS repository to get all the courses available in the system. Go ahead and add the await keyword for that particular call. 
Next, go to the in memory CMS repository class in the CMS data repository class library. Duplicate the get all courses method to support the asynchronous model. Give a different name by suffixing using the async keyword followed by returning the type as async task of i enumerable course. Currently, you are returning only the courses that are of type list. To make it compatible with asynchronous, for now, you can use task.run so that you can await on that particular statement. Since you will be using link capability, you need to bring in the corresponding namespace as well. Once done, get back to the course controller, update it to use the relevant method name. Looks like we have missed adding it to the interface. Get back to the ICMS repository, add a new entry to get all courses async method. Also, you need to add the task keyword at the start of the turn type. We got one error in SQL CMS repository class. The reason being, it does not have the get all courses async method implemented. One way is to implement the same in the class using corresponding database related logic. However, we added this SQL CMS repository as just an example to show that multiple database repositories can be created for the common iCMS repository interface. Since you are using in-memory CMS repository as the main repository class for this entire project, for now, you do not need the usage of SQL CMS repository. Hence, you can just comment out the place where it derives from the iCMS repository so that you can concentrate only on the in-memory CMS repository class. Once it is done, then the error in that file will get resolved. Coming back to the courses controller, the get all course method looks fine now for its usage. Next, go to the terminal, change to the corresponding folder and run the program. Execute the API request for the get operation for the course resource. It should give you the same result as we have seen before. However, the main difference in this case is that you have used an asynchronous model of using async task keywords for the get all courses method. In a similar fashion, you can implement all your forthcoming action methods using an asynchronous model. But to keep it simple and for your easier understanding, I am going to skip using them for now. You can add it later as an assignment. As the next step, you need to update the get operations to use one of the approaches that you had covered in this section. You have a choice of returning just the type as in approach 1 or returning i action result as in approach 2 or return action result of t as explained in approach 3. Since the recommended approach was to use action result of t, namely approach 3, you will be using the same throughout this course. Coming to step 8 of updating the get operation to use the action result for the get all courses method, you had already done that when these different approaches were covered. Hence, you do not need to take any further action for this particular action method for the course controller. I explicitly wanted to capture it as one of the steps for this course so that you do not miss this important step when you are implementing your own API. Hence. If you are developing an API for your project, as part of this step, make sure you update all your operations to use the action result of the return type. Let us summarize the concepts that you had learned in this section, a closer look at return types. In this section, you were introduced to three different approaches of returning the result from an action method of any controllers. In the first approach, you can use the type directly from the method. In this case, you are going to return the primitive type or the complex type directly from the action method. Also, for collections, you can return i enumerable of t by using the toList method of the type. In the second approach, you can use i action result that allows an action to return more than one type of action result. The controller base class allows you to use short forms such as OK, bad request and so on as per the successful or failure cases in the method. Note that the values to be returned from the method are wrapped using one of these short forms. 
In the third approach, you will learn to use action result which allows you to return any class derived from the action result or any specific type. In short, this is a combination of approach 1 and approach 2. Among these three different approaches, it is recommended to use the action result of t approach for returning values from the action methods. Next, you can convert your action methods to support asynchronous processing using async and await keywords. For this, you wrap the return type with either async task or async i async enumerable. You are then presented with the steps to convert your action method to support asynchronous programming for the get courses method. This concludes the section on return types. In the next section, improving your web API project, you will learn how you can improve your web API project using techniques such as auto mapper, validating your models using attributes and so on. Let's see that next.